hi there welcome back and in this video let us see how we can represent irrational numbers on a number line and this is a special method called the spiral method and you will soon come to know why the method is so called okay and this method is mostly used when the number under the square root sign is a whole number now to start with i have on i have my number line drawn here and the tip that you will need here for this method is whatever number is given to you you should always look for the perfect square just before the given number okay so which is the perfect square just before 2 it's 1 so what is square root of 1 it's 1 so my method here starts with at the number 1 okay and i will use specific colors to make it uh, look very clear so i should start with 1 and i am considering this as one unit so what i do is step 1 is at 1 you will draw a perpendicular again of one unit okay now the rule is wherever you are starting the perpendicular drawn is always of one unit only don't get confused don't think if i start at 3 it should be three units it's not like that wherever you are starting the perpendicular should always be one unit let me show the mark of the perpendicular done then we try to join our zero with the end of the one unit thing okay and to make it easier to understand let me name this as uh, let me name this point as a and this point as b okay here so if you see this is one and the height is always also one and the triangle that you see here is a right angle triangle and the most commonly used theorem in case of right angle triangle is the pythagoras theorem if you remember so what we try to do is we try to find the hypotenuse ob using the pythagoras theorem so my ob will be square root of oa square plus ab square okay that gives me 1 square plus 1 square which should be square root of 2 so i got my hypotenuse length as root 2 and what were we asked in the question it's root 2 only okay so now how do we bring this part here it's very easy you will be using a ruler and a compass to get the accurate representation so what you will do is you will start at zero okay your center should be zero and you will measure a radius of root 2 and then try to draw the circle so that the arc intersects the number line and wherever it is intersecting this whole length will be root 2 because even this part let me name it as c oc is also the radius of the same circle you don't have to draw the complete circle you just need the arc where the point uh, the exact point where it is cutting and we can make an approximate guess of the value of root 2 it should be somewhere between 1 and 2 midway be between 1 and 2 and if you draw it accurately using a compass you will get at least to one or two decimal places correct your answer it should match to 1.414 approximately at least you'll get 1.4 okay now why is this method called a spiral method for that we have to take one more example so what we do is let my second example be root 3 okay now the spiral will continue here for root 3 again if you see the perfect square number before 3 is also 1 okay so we have already initiated the process so at my new uh hypotenuse ob which is actually root 2 that now becomes my new base 
and as I mentioned to you, I will always drop in one unit perpendicular. So let me drop in one unit perpendicular. Let me keep it white. Let me drop in one unit perpendicular and mark it like this. And again, uh, I have my A, B, C. Let me mark it as D and try to join it with O. Okay. So if you see O, D again, Pythagoras theorem will be OB square plus BD square which will give me square root of root 2 square plus 1 square which actually gives me root 3. Fine. So OD is root 3. Okay. So again if you want to find out the exact point where it meets you will have to take O as center and OD as radius and try to drop in somewhere here. It will come somewhere here. So it should be somewhere uh, more than 1.5 but less than 2. The value of root 3. Okay. Uh, now let me just take this down to make it more clear. Okay. So from here till this point is my root 3. Fine. Now, let us see how the spiral is actually becoming bigger. So, I tried to shift uh, that part here so that my spiral can be seen clearly. So, for root 4, okay, for root 4, we follow the same method. Now, if you know root 4 is nothing but 2, but then does it match with our spiral? Let us just check. For root 4, my root 3 becomes the base and at the base again I draw one unit perpendicular. Name it as E. Join E with O. Okay. So that if you apply the Pythagoras theorem again, OE will be square root of root 3 square plus 1 square which will be root 4 which is nothing but 2. Okay. And you will check once you take OE as your radius and try to drop in the arc, it will exactly coincide with the 2 if you are doing it properly. Okay. And how will my next number look like? Root 5. Again, it will be the same. Okay. Let it be F. This will be root 5. What about root 6? It will come here. Sorry. So root 6 will come somewhat like this. Okay. This is always perpendicular. 1 unit root 6. And again perpendicular. 1 unit root 7. And so on. The number spiral will go on increasing. If you can see... It looks like a spiral, okay, and becomes bigger and bigger. With each consecutive number's square root uh, becoming the new hypotenuse, okay. And as you come to root 9, its value will coincide with, this will be root 8. And then again, this will be root 9. So that if you try to take the radius of O and this particular point say P and try to drop in a perpendicular, uh, sorry, the circle, it will coincide with 3. Okay. So as you can see, a spiral is formed and that's why this method is called spiral method. Okay. And the, uh, can you do it for bigger numbers? Yes, definitely you can use it for bigger numbers. And uh, how will you use that? For example, if I am given asked to find for root 50, I don't have to start from 1 and spend hours together to do this. As I told you the tip, what was the tip? Always look for the perfect square just before the given number. So which is the perfect square just before this number? It's 49. Okay. And what is square root of 49? It is equal to 7. So what you will do is, I'll just quickly tell you, you can have your 0 here and 7 somewhere here. 
So you will start, your starting point will be 7. Again at 7 you will drop 1 unit perpendicular. Remember it's always 1 unit. And then kind of join it and then use this part as your radius to drop in the arc. And this point will correspond to your root 50. Okay. Hope that's clear to you. And if you like my explanation, please uh, press the like button and try to subscribe my channel. Thank you.